Well folks, here it is, the final weapon to be introduced in Gen 4, possibly considered the face of 4 and 4 Ultimate. I introduce to you an incredibly unique entry in the series, the Insect Glaive. In a time where mounting and aerial attacks were introduced into Monster Hunter as a series, the Insect Glaive fit right in with its uniqueness via aerial mobility. But that wasn't the only thing that made this weapon special. No, the inclusion of Kinsex really helped to distance this this weapon from the other options out there. I'm gonna be honest, this weapon never really interested me. I really wasn't into the idea of having both a weapon to use and upgrade as well as a little pet to do the same, but having been working through each weapon within the video series, I've began to see many mechanics and nuances to equipment that make me more open-minded about the options available to hunters in this game. So I'm excited to get to work and research all of the aspects of both the Insect Glaive and Kinsex. As I mentioned in previous videos, I like to take your opinions into consideration when it comes to which weapon I will cover next. If you want your weapon to be covered soon, be sure to let me know in the comments. And please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube's algorithm will bless me in the future. I'm on the run right now and uploading this from Alaska. Susan and the YouTube squadron of elite operatives have tracked my location, but I'm close to finding their hidden HQ and rescuing my family. I will find and defeat the fabled algorithm them, and I will save humanity from Google. Anyway, I'm Super Rad, and this is the history of the Insect Glaive. Similar to Charge Blade, the Insect Glaive was introduced in Generation 4, specifically Monster Hunter 4, and it was the perfect inclusion for this entry as it fit alongside the new mechanics added such as aerial attacks and mounting. In fact, it was the aerial king at the start of its inclusion and was the de facto weapon for producing mounting attacks. To start things off, we'll discuss the options provided for you specifically revolving around the weapon itself, then we'll move on to the Kinsect. First up is the Draw attack, which is great at closing distance. You can perform this advancing attack while in sheaths by pressing forward and A at the same time, and this can be woven into your traditional X combo, or you can press A again to finish with a two-hit combo by slamming the glaive into the ground. There's an X or triple combo you can perform by pressing X consecutively. You can either start this combo normally, or hold forward and press X to perform a forward thrust first to replace the initial attack of the sequence and then follow up with the rest of the combo. Next is the backflip maneuver that can be performed out of the forward thrust move. By pressing back and A at the same time after the thrust, the hunter will perform a backflip attack. It can also be performed after the follow-up to the thrust, and a finisher can be performed by pressing forward and A, or the hunter can start a new X combo. Similar to the Fade Slash on Longsword, this does not have iframes, unfortunately. You can infinite with some of these moves while on the ground, but probably shouldn't be doing so unless the monster's downed. Generally, X into X into A into A for a finisher is the go-to from my understanding, but there may be other ways of going about it. Moving on, we have the first aspect of the glaive that leads to its unique playstyle, the ability to perform aerial attacks from anywhere. Pressing R and B while holding forward will perform an aerial jumping pole vault maneuver Similarly, after a grounded attack, the hunter can press back instead of forward to pull vault backwards. While in the air, pressing X leads to an aerial attack that contributes towards the mounting threshold. Je suis monté. Or you can press R to perform a pheromone shot that can mark the monster and work as an evasive option. So let's talk about the Kinsect. This is one of the two aspects of the glaive that make it so unique. The Kinsect is a customizable utility option for hunters, and you can basically think of it as an added piece of equipment exclusive to the Insect Glaive. By pressing R and X together, you can fire off the Kinsect to collide with monsters. But even better, you can mark targets first so that when you launch your Kinsect, it will fly to your desired location. By holding R to aim, you can press the X button to launch your Kinsect, but if you instead let go of R, you'll mark the target. There's an alternative charge launch where the bug does a type of piercing attack, but I don't believe it was incredibly useful. Additionally, on top of the ways that I previously mentioned, you can also mark a target via attack attacking by pressing the R button mid-combo. So why even have the Kinsect? It's not like its damage output is extremely high by any means, and as a melee user, especially one focusing on aerial attacks, you'll probably be more interested in staying close to the enemy. Well, here's the thing. Buffs. Big buffs, in fact. 
See, there's four potential buffs that can be applied to the hunter via the Kinsect by having it latch onto monsters in specific areas of their body and suck in the goop juice right out of them. The Kinsect can then return to the hunter and vomit all over them to bestow a specific color of buff. Large monsters have all four potential colors available to be drained. However, small monsters only have one color and said color is specific to the type of small monster. These buffs are timed, but you can refresh the timer by grabbing the buff again and again. That is, if you don't have all three buffs active at one time, but we'll also get into that soon. The game will warn you when the buff is about to run out using the UI element that begins to flash at around 10 seconds. So what do the colors do? As mentioned, there's four colors available, those being green, red, orange, and white. Green is less a buff and just a dedicated way to heal your hunter via the Kinsect. Generally, attaching the Kinsect to a monster's tail is the means of acquiring this extract. When the Kinsect returns to you, you'll heal for a small amount. For the actual for actual buffs, we need to first talk about the white extract, because it can affect the following colors significantly. White buff is great for its 90 second buff of enhanced movement speed and jump height. This will allow you to position yourself better and easily reach the top of most if not all monsters when attacking in the air. The other big factor about this extract is that it can mix with the orange and red extracts to enhance each of their buffs. You usually get this extract from what the monster generally uses to move, so you know, maybe the feet, the wings, etc. The orange extract applies super armor to your hunter. You'll usually acquire this one from the body or the torso, mostly the more armored parts of the body that have low hit zone values. It lasts for about 45 seconds. Now if you have the orange buff active with the white buff, they'll mix and you'll gain an additional buff of 6% defense boost as well as the old school rocksteady ability. I say old school in this because of the new school rocksteady mantle in world which is a little bit different. This lasts as long as both buffs are active, so if one runs runs out, you lose the mixed effect. Now red buff applies probably one of the most useful set of effects. It changes your attack animation to provide additional hits and effectively allows you to output double the DPS with that alone. But that's not all. No, mix it with white and you'll also be bestowed a 20% attack boost. It's basically a requirement to have this up at all times because the damage output is just so exceptionally high in comparison to not having the buffs applied. Finally, if you have red, orange, and white all applied at the same time, the buff effect will reset to a 60 second dedicated timer and the mix Mixed effects will all gain an additional boost. The defense up will go from 6% to 8% and the attack up will go from 20% to 25%. This is nothing to scoff at, and being able to effectively manage these buffs is a big factor when it comes to efficient insect glaive play. It should be noted that once in this triple mixture, you cannot refresh the timer on any of the buffs until the boosted effect wears off. To optimize uptime, you'll generally see hunters using red and white buff until the timer on one is close to running out and then slot in the orange buff to refresh the timer and improve functionality. Kinsects come with their own attacks and can be upgraded by feeding them with food known as nectars that can be scavenged or traded for. By feeding the Kinsect you can upgrade three stats known as power, weight, and speed. Power is the base attack of the Kinsect and weight dictates how many times you can command the Kinsect before it times out and cools down. Finally, speed, it's well, how fast the Kinsect move and comes back to you. It's pretty important. Depending on your type of Insect Glaive, your Kinsect will either be impact or cutting damage, meaning you end up with a lot of options going into a hunt. Upgrading your Glaive is directly tied into taking care of your Kinsect. Not only do you need specific monster parts, but you need to make sure you put enough points into your Kinsect before an upgrade is even possible. This makes upgrading the weapon fairly annoying in my opinion, as there's lots of aspects to feeding your Kinsect to make note of. For one, you generally have to level them up multiple times before an upgrade, and the food you feed them actually both negatively and positively affects stats. Upgrading one stat may lower another, so you need to consider what you actually want to build your Kinsect for before feeding it. Even crazier, once you level them up enough, you get the option to evolve them, with evolving usually focusing on having the Kinsect specializing in one of its three major stat groups, and may even bestow skills based on this evolution. So yeah, there's a lot to Kinsects, especially early on in the weapon's introduction. Having the upgrading of of your insect glaive tied to your kinsect would change in later generations, but for now, this is how it was, and how it was was pretty rough. Now onto Generations Ultimate, we can talk about the inclusions of styles and arts, as well as what changes mechanically with the glaive in between these two entries.
trees. Well, praise Ichinose, because the Kinsect is no longer tied to the upgrading of your glaive. Instead, you will level up and evolve the Kinsect separately from your weapon and don't have to worry about any additional grind for your Kinsect if you decide to use a different glaive. Thank god, because that really cuts down on the amount of grinding and cost necessary for the weapon. However, other than that, there weren't many mechanical differences of note to mention, so now we can move right into the styles. The main styles utilized by hunters that were the most effective included Guild, Alchemy, and Valor. And really, these styles would be switched up regularly depending on the matchup. It wasn't just one style that dominated the rest. Guild style was good because on top of retaining all of the glaive's functionality, it also allowed you to bring two arts. Arts that were, unfortunately, not some of the most effective with the glaive. So having two instead of one was more than enough as the main mechanics of the glaive persisted. The main arts that the hunter would use with this style were absolute readiness and a glaive-specific art known as Extract Hunter, which launches the Kinsect incredibly fast towards the monster and will extract all three buff effects at once. The duration of this, however, is fairly low and can be improved with the second and third tier of this ability. Alchemy style removes the backflip, charging Kinsect, and marking while in the air, but that's not really a big deal. What is a big deal is losing the ability to perform infinite combos. It's impossible to go from an A attack to an X attack, but you can roll to cancel out of the combo or press A to do a finisher. On top of getting the Alchemy Barrel effects, you can also get access to three Hunter Arts. While the first two remain the same with Absolute Readiness and Extract Hunter, most hunters would bring Bug Blow along with them as well, which is a combo maneuver that is followed up with a Pole Vault into a Slam Attack. It was useful for preventing limping and just fitting in a bit of extra damage when possible. Finally, Valor Style is next, and you'd only really slot in Absolute Readiness with it. You have no means of performing Grounded Pole Vault attacks while in this style if not in the Valor state outside of Cancel Attacks, so building up to that is fairly important. There's also the removal of the Marking Attack that is underutilized. The final hit of the triple X combo is also removed in this state, but it was also hardly ever used. For cancel attacks, you can cancel into a double strike with X, into a backflip with A, and into a forward or backward pole vault with R and B. This mode was mostly utilized for the evade step and easy extract uptime. Why is it easy? Well, A button attacks now automatically launch the Kinsect and allow the hunter to get both additional damage and free extracts while continuing to combo. In fact, the A finisher options propel the Kinsect even faster and provide higher motion value. So it's a pretty effective choice, but you do have the options. If pressing the A button while the Kinsect is out, it will return to you, then again will be launched with future attacks. Alright, with all that out of the way, it's time to move on to Generation 5 and see what World, Iceborne, and Rise brought to the table. For the most part, World seems to have kept the majority of the grounded options the same or at least very similar in comparison to their old school counterparts. Where the main glaive attack differences really lie are in the aerial attacks. Similar to previous entries, you can hold a direction and press X to pull vault into the air, and there are now several new options a hunter can use while in this state. Of course you can simply attack with triangle, and this will be what was most familiar to hunters at the time of release. But moving on from that, you can also press the X to perform an air dash for extended mobility while in the air. This is great for repositioning to make sure you can actually hit the monster you're hunting. You can even perform the air dash as long as you have stamina which is drained with each activation. On top of that, pressing the circle button while in the air will perform this dash as well as an attack known as a jumping advancing slash. And this is the main ability used for keeping the glaive hunter airborne as long as possible. See, by connecting with the monster using the attack, you will be launched upward into an ability known as Vaulting Dance, and it is a great way to regen stamina while outputting damage so you can air dash again. However, this vaulting ability is limited to 4 consecutive attacks, meaning after the 4th jumping advancing slash, instead of vaulting upward, the hunter will land on the ground, and this is regardless of stamina. On to Kinsect changes, there was a quality of life feature added where the hunter can now see the stamina bar of their Kinsect. This is useful for knowing when the hunter can and cannot utilize their Kinsect for more efficient and play. Busts generally function the same, but there's been general nerfs or changes throughout in terms of the percentage of certain values and the duration. I won't go into all of them, but one major change is that there is no way to get the Rocksteady effect from Orange Buff anymore and this is most likely due to the existence of Rocksteady Mantle, which can now be activated at any time as long as the cooldown hasn't expired, and gives you Hyper Armor now instead of Super Armor from Old Gen. Additionally, Red Buff still upgrades the animations and hits of all of your attacks and should be kept up as long as possible. Even the new aerial moves have been 
upgraded, like the jumping advancing slash, which becomes a longer multi-hit maneuver that can still launch you. While jumping attacks are nice for mounting damage, hunters will still be outputting more damage from the ground, but the nice thing about mounting as a glaive user is that moving around the monster will cause the hunter to provide additional damage during the animations. You probably won't be moving around too much and simply be mashing triangle to try and down the monster, but it's a nice little boost to glaive users who used to be the mounting experts. Je suis monté. If you do choose to move around a bit more for extra damage, you're in luck, as the buff timer on your extracts doesn't actually deplete during this mechanic. There's a brand new mechanic tied to marking. By pressing L2 and R2, the hunter will be able to mark their target like normal, and while the kinsect will go and grab the extract for you, it will also stay around the monster to deal damage over time and apply a cloud of tiny insects that can have various effects. The kinsect will perform these attacks until you call it back or it runs out of stamina, but I believe that the cloud of insects are placed right at the beginning. In fact, it seems optimal to use this damage over time as a means of optimizing total damage once you have all three buffs applied, as you won't need your kinsect to extract again until the timer runs out. The most useful effect of leaving the kinsect on the monster seems to have been impact kinsects attached to the head in order to provide a KO, or maybe attaching a cutting insect to the tail in order to sever it. The clouds placed are activated by attacking them, and they can come in four varieties, including poison, paralysis, healing, and blast. Poison and paralysis are exactly what you expect and allow you to build up their specific status ailment. Healing is similar to green extract, meaning glaive users can now have more options for keeping themselves topped up. Finally, blast is great at providing extra damage overall and breaking parts. Similar to the change in generations, you no longer need to worry about upgrading your kinsect in order to upgrade your glaive, but it's been simplified even further. Instead of feeding and planning out the stats of your kinsect, it works even more like a traditional weapon upgrade tree. Well, it's a traditional weapon upgrade tree in that you can view all of the possible kinsect options at the smithy. Each upgrade to the kinsect takes specific monster materials exactly like how any weapon would, so it is much, much easier to build towards whichever kinsect you want. They're mostly broken up into two main trees, with one tree focusing on Sever and the other on Blunt, and you may have noticed that those names have changed between generations. And then within them, you can build towards specific dust effects, so if you want a KO Blast kinsect and a Sever Poison and kinsect, both options are possible. You can even assign specific elements to your kinsect within a separate menu at the smithy. This will nerf some of your kinsect stats at the cost of giving them a desired element when attacking, but it's almost always better to give your kinsect an element than not, as the stat decrease is minimal for what you're getting out of the element. In fact, it seems incredibly useful to have a set of five of your favorite kinsect and apply a unique element to each one so you can swap between them depending on what you are hunting at the time. Now there's some big changes to the Glaive and Iceborne. We'll start with the ability to enhance your kinsect using slinger ammo. By aiming with L2 and pressing the triangle and circle together, the hunter can feed whatever slinger ammo they have to the kinsect in order to enhance it. Doing so allows the kinsect to grab two extracts instead of one before returning to the player, so you could have it move in to attack one spot of the monster for a red buff and then another spot for white, then have it return to apply the mixture effect immediately. The type of slinger ammo used can put your kinsect into different states. The power charge, for example, is denoted by a red icon and will allow the kinsect to deal more damage when attacking the marked target, as well as placing multiple clouds for the hunter to attack. You can acquire this buff by taking Slinger Ammo directly from the monster. Field Slinger Ammo, on the other hand, will provide the Spirit Charge effect and a yellow icon to the Kinsect, on top of increasing the duration of the triple buff effect when activated. However, both states will increase individual buff durations. Moving on to a more important and incredibly useful mechanic introduced, Insect Glaive users gain access to a new marking attack where, once in the air, they can press R2 to perform a piercing downward stab attack known as Descending Thrust. On top of having some of the weapons Weapon's highest motion values. The fact that it marks mid combo means you won't find yourself stopping combos in order to properly mark the target. On top of this, having your kinsect recalled on your arm while performing the attack will cause it to detach and stay within the position that you are starting the animation in, only returning at the end of said animation. On the return path, the kinsect will pierce anything in its trajectory for extra damage. This bug pierce move may not have been first considered very important, but ended up being highly utilized throughout Iceborne later on. Another benefit of the glaive is that it can clutch claw while in the air, but the actual effects of the grapple seem to be the same whether it's done in the air or on the ground. Now I need to give you guys a spoiler alert. While at the time of writing this script, I am personally not very far into Ryze's content, in order to give you as much info as I can about the changes to the insect glaive, I have to go over progression-based mechanics. You've been warned, and if you want to skip to the non-spoiler specific section, basically the outro, I'll leave his timestamp in the description. Also keep in mind that this is being written a day
day one of the game's official release, so certain aspects of the weapon will unfortunately be limited, and I can't go into crazy detail about every single thing. The acquisition of Kinsex has been extremely streamlined in this entry. Specifically, you no longer are required to upgrade them via crafting like in World, where they were more similar to weapons. Instead, the hunter will unlock new Kinsex to purchase as they progress through the game, each with unique features and stats. These stats are then influenced by the type of Kinsect glaive being used. Each Kinsect will have a level from 1 to 8, and this level is based on the insect glaive the hunter currently has equipped. On top of the stats being influenced by the glaive, the Kinsect element is now determined by the weapon as well, meaning there is no longer a penalty to Kinsect elements or a need to make multiple of the same Kinsect just to have a variety of elements applied. While the base archetypes of Sever and Blunt mark the return for each Kinsect, there's multiple new subtypes to discuss and bonuses that range from Kinsect to Kinsect. First we have the four subtypes that consist of Normal, Speed, Powder, and Assist. Normal doesn't introduce new mechanics to the Kinsect, but is missing features and some of them have been moved to a specific Kinsect subtype. See, the Powder subtype is now tied to Kinsects that can release the dust clouds we are familiar with in World. Each of these Powder subtypes will fall under one of the typical dust categories, meaning the other types, including Normal, would not have access to it. Speed has a new mechanic where, while recalled, the Kinsect will build up a charge until it flashes blue. When shot out, the Kinsect will have higher mobility and will deal more damage than you'd typically notice. Finally, Assist allows the Kinsect to attack as the Hunter does while recalled. Which sounds pretty good since it'll lead to consistent and extra damage over time. There's a part in the Hunter's Notes that explain how the Assist Kinsect will also make use of the various Extract types, but how this works mechanically, I'm not completely sure about. If you have a better understanding of this specific mechanic, please let me know in the comments and I'll update it in the description. Hey guys, so I do actually have some more information about the glaive that I didn't have when I was originally writing the script. I mentioned there's things about the Kinsect that I don't understand, specifically the assist type and how it utilizes the extract, but uh, Eric's actually has a really good video going over that about the different Kinsect types. And apparently having the Kinsect have all three of the Kinsect extract types will allow it to attack with you. And that that's when it attacks with you in assist mode. So yeah, I wasn't exactly sure what I meant by utilizing them, but it seems you have to have the triple buff effect in order to properly use it. There's even more uniqueness tied to the Kinsects in the form of bonus effects. These are extra buffs or mechanical effects tied to the Kinsect that can help boost your play or influence your decision on what Kinsect you plan to bring. For example, there's the triple up time buff that will increase the duration of extract effects when all three are active in unison. There's also the dual color bonus types that come in three flavors, defense, attack, and speed. Each of these will allow the Kinsect to gain an extra color while extracting from the monster. Attack provides red extract on top of the extract gained from shooting out the Kinsect, and defense and speed provide orange and white respectively. There's many other bonus types, and I won't get into them all here, so be sure to check out your options as you unlock new Kinsects while progressing. Additionally, while I won't get into specific values, the extract buffs mostly remain the same. However, the effects of the old school rock steady seem to be applied to the orange buff once again, and do not require a mixture of orange and white to activate. Instead, simply Simply grabbing orange will give you the rock steady effect, from my understanding. Moving on to the new switch skill abilities, you have the Tornado Slash, which can be swapped with Tetris Seal Slash, and Leaping Slash, which can be replaced with Advancing Round Slash. Tornado Slash we've seen previously and is a very effective move. One that I'm unsure you'd want to switch with Tetris Seal, which performs four attacks in succession with the ability to generate powder or dust effects. You can access both of these moves after a strong wide sweep or strong double slash, meaning you need to have red extract active to utilize them. As a reminder for Leaping Slash, it's activated by pressing forward and A on the gamepad. You can replace this with Advancing Round Slash and can combo out of the Round Slash into Reaping Slash for extra damage. Advancing Round Slash also works as a type of parry, where when activated will shrug off an incoming attack and launch the hunter upwards, potentially allowing you to set up an easy in for one of the new Silkbind abilities. Finally, we can move on to the Silkbind abilities. First up is Silkbind Vault, which allows you to perform an additional jumping motion either forward or upward and is great for both mobility and uptime when wanting to stay in the air for aerial attacks. Additionally, hunters can combo out of this ability in a variety of ways. Next up is Recall Kinsect, which seems fairly effective from a utility standpoint. On top of acting as an evasive option, the move also allows you to recall your Kinsect from midair, which is not usually possible. On top of this, it will attack anything in its path as it returns, similar to the descending thrust attack we've seen in Iceborne. Once recalled, it will even heal the hunter. As a non-Insect Glaive player, I find it difficult to comment on the 
usefulness of certain abilities, but from an outward glance, Recall Kinsect seems highly viable. Last but not least is the Diving Wyvern Silkbind ability, which seems to function similar to Downward Thrust from Iceborne. I don't know how much damage it does specifically, but if it's anything like Descending Thrust, it will most likely be highly useful and utilized often. The move even allows you to activate it while grounded, meaning a wire bug will pull you up before you thrust downward. In terms of mechanics, it seems like the attacking recall effect is now specifically assigned to Recall Kinsect, while the thrust move has been applied to Diving Wyvern, so make of that what you will. Oh, additional note about Diving Wyvern, uh, and thanks to Cups for showing me this and allowing me to use his footage for both this and the advancing round slash maneuver. Diving Wyvern will actually do more damage the more attacks you perform while in the air. So the longer you're off the ground and actually using your abilities to make contact with the monster, the more damage you'll do when you actually decide to use Diving Wyvern. So, you know, plan ahead for that or whatever. As I mentioned, there's multiple new mechanics involving weapon customization and the rampage which can allow you to change various aspects of your equipment. These can not only be specific to class, but specific to each individual weapon within them, so I won't be going into too much detail here. To give you an example, some glaives may let you change their element type to a new category with a 10 point boost. Obviously, as the game has only been out one day as of writing this, I'm working with what I got so far. If there's any mistakes or clarifications, please let me know and I'll update the description as I said previously. Until then, I think that's all there is to talk about in regards to Monster Hunter Rise. The Insect Glaive was potentially one of the hardest weapons for me to cover in terms of research and reaching out to the community to have the script looked over. It's a very interesting weapon, and the features extend much further than simply being able to jump. The Kinsect has evolved over each entry and generation and has slowly become more and more streamlined with each release. It always seems like it's the Gen 4 weapons that create some of the longer scripts, but I believe that's because they are honestly so mechanically diverse and evolving that the weapon requires me to go even more in depth than usual. Hopefully I did Insect Glaive justice here, and if I left anything out or got anything wrong, I encourage you to clarify for me in the comments. Anyway, that's all I have for you today in regards to the Insect Glaive. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what your favorite weapon is and what weapon you want me to cover next. I'm also streaming regularly on Twitch now, and our Discord is growing rapidly, so if you want to join the community and maybe participate in viewer hunts, feel free to stop by. Okay, it is time for the Patreon thank yous at the end of the video welcome this is the first time i have had to do this so bear with me here if you don't know i have a patreon now and there are certain benefits you can get you probably saw you know the names scrolling along the the end of the video and this is the higher tier for like i think like 10 bucks where i will actually shout you out specifically because you know you guys are so great for supporting me and i really appreciate it so we have keyroy Thank you for the support. Jonathan, thank you so much. Strangely, thank you. Uh, big supporter of the channel and all the stuff that we're doing here. Really appreciate it. Ben, thank you so much. Ben VB. Lude Hifumi, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Rosa Leo, thank you again. Really appreciative. Really appreciating it. Thank you again so much. So great. Justin R R Raggle. Raggle? Raggle? I don't know. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce it right, but Justin, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Kepler, appreciate it. I think you're in the Discord. I see you up very often. Uh, thank you so much. Matthew Nelson, thank you. I appreciate it. You're killing it, Matthew. And my good friend Ryan Z, or Z, or however they say it in America. We say Z in Canada, but Ryan Z, really appreciate it. One of my mods. Very nice of you. Thanks so much. And uh, thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Video.